So I recently found myself wondering what would it be like in RimWorld to build an alcohol empire where our main and basically only export would be some form of alcohol, whether it be beer or liquor or something of that sort. And to make things more interesting, we're also constantly being raided by the RimWorld Marshal Service who is trying to enforce prohibition. It's kind of like the movie Lawless, except it's not, and then also I'm not Tom Hardy, unfortunately. But never mind all that, let us begin. Now, some of you true fans of the content may recognize our two main characters. This series takes place 23 years in the future after Bacchus escaped her enslavers in the logging settlement. And if you're new here and have no idea what I'm talking about, I have left a link to this series in the description down below. But it is time to begin our alcohol empire. First things first, we cut down some trees and we're going to build a very small makeshift shelter so we can stay the night in. Because oddly enough, it's very hard to make alcohol if a wolf sneaks up on you while you're sleeping in the forest at night and bites off your little fingers. Tree began finishing up our walls before also deciding to mine into the hillside just a little bit to make a little more room as it is her and her mother that's going to be sleeping in here. She also began deconstructing some ancient steel ruins so we could make a brewery out of it. Uh, these were probably important to some ancient people, but now we're going to use it to make alcohol. Oh, this beautiful steel sarcophagus houses the remains of your dead relative? Oh, that's a shame because I just turned it into a keg. After a long, hard day of work, Bacchus and Tree both lie down in the makeshift shelter in the hillside and finally got a good night's sleep. And it was much needed as well because there was a lot of work to be done here if we were ever going to turn this place into a real alcohol empire. We had a lot of hops to grow if we were ever going to make any real money doing this bootlegging. In the meantime though, everyone's bellies were rumbling just a little bit, so Tree decided to take out her pistol and go hunt an Ibex ram, that way they could have it for supper tonight. And just as well by doing so, we could begin a small collection of leathers, so what we'll want to do with that is make some tents, that way everyone's nice and comfy outside instead of sleeping in a little cold hillside. And I'm sure you've heard the old saying, you don't eat shit where you sleep. Well, you know, just as well, you also don't brew where you sleep. So we began building some canopies outside. And I'm not going to lie to you, these wooden canopies absolutely suck ass in terms of having our colonists sleep in them. We would probably be better off building some cabins or something. But the problem is with that, you start building a massive town trying to sell alcohol, you're going to have the entire Rimworld Marshal Service breathing down your neck and we're just not ready for that. Sometime later, we had our very first event. It was a mad squirrel out in the forest coming to take our nuts. Little did this squirrel know, we're ladies and we don't have any nuts. But we do have a tomahawk, so we chopped that little son of a bitch in half. And now we're going to eat him for supper tonight. Sometime later, though, we decided we needed a lot more room in our hillside for brewing and storage, so we began digging out a large portion. We ended up having the opportunity to name the settlement and the faction. I named it the Silverhorn Brewing Company as well as Silverhorn Mountain, after Bacchus and her massive horn. And then, as if on cue, we had our very first RimWorld Marshal who was coming to investigate. It looks like he already knows what we're up to here, and he's come to put a stop to it. The marshal approached our camp and then we caught wind that he was actually here. Tree ran outside and began firing upon him and a gunfight ensued between the two of them. Lucky for us though, as Tree was keeping the marshal busy with her gunfire, Bacchus decided to sneak around and give him the old one-two from behind. She threw a tomahawk and nicked him in the shoulder before running in and just finishing the job. Our two ladies decided to strip the marshal of his apparel. It was time that we threw down these dirty old dresses and we picked up some wonderful dusters. We don't conform to your gender roles, we're bootleggers, Bacchus yelled at the marshal before cutting his throat and sending him on up to heaven. Or hell. Hey look, that's between him and the big guy, okay? I don't know, I just kill people and make alcohol. 
Anyhow, though, we decided to take the Marshall Star and add to our collection. Well, truthfully, we're actually beginning a collection, and maybe we'll end up selling a bunch of them to someone, or maybe we'll just end up keeping them and stare at them and think of all the disgusting deeds that we've committed in the name of beer. And speaking of beer, we began building our very first fermenting barrels, and not too long after that, thankfully, we also had our first harvest of hops. Finally, a few days in and one dead Marshall later, we could finally begin making some alcohol to sell. It would still take quite a while as we had to wait on the wort to ferment, but that's okay, it's a start. A little while later, we had a gentleman named Saburo who was approaching from nearby saying that he was banished by a village leader and he just wanted to stay here for 16 days. He would help us with whatever we needed help with, no questions asked. So we accepted. Instead of letting Saburo jump right into our bootlegging operation as he was brand new here, we couldn't trust him, he could even be a marshal in disguise, he had a really good intellectual skill so we began letting him do some research on different alcohols for us as well as other things like roads. And then finally a few days later we had our very first yield of alcohol. We only had 15 beer come out of this but it was better than nothing. And funny enough some time later we ended up having our very first customers stop by. It was a group of outlaws coming to visit to see what we had to trade. I suppose word was finally getting around to all the outlaws and settlers that we were making alcohol in these here mountains. Which, of course, obviously is a blessing, don't get me wrong, but the problem with that is, as we grow and word of mouth gets around, we're going to see massive raids from the RimWorld Marshal Service. Lucky for us this time it was only two marshals and we were able to quickly ambush them at the end of the cave. It was so dark during the entire thing the only thing you could see was the moon in the sky and the flash of our pistols. We stabbed one of them and painfully beat them to the ground and the other tree shot in the dead of night and killed. We stripped down the living marshal and then Bacchus came in with her tomahawk and treated her head like a watermelon. She ended up putting on the marshal's clothes. You may be wondering why I continue to strip down the marshals and wear their outfits around when we're not trying to be marshals. Well, we're two dirt poor people trying to sell alcohol to survive essentially and we're going to try and grow an empire, but also these dresses that we had on have very low protection compared to the gear that the marshals are wearing. So you can imagine getting shot in a dress compared to a leather duster might hurt a little bit more. Sometime later, we had finally accumulated enough leather that we could actually build some real tents instead of sleeping in these shitty canopies. And just to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about, so this Viking style tent has a 95% rest effectiveness while the wooden canopy has a 74% rest effectiveness, so it's, it's quite a big difference. Tree felt bad that she was the only one with one of these sweet ass tents, so Bacchus began making some patch leather, that way we could try and make everyone a nice tent. And you know, to be fair, the better that everyone is resting, the better they're going to be at making some liquor and some beer and stuff like that, because if you're half asleep trying to do that shit, you're probably going to mess it up somehow. Now that our operation and the demand for alcohol was growing, we would also need to grow the brewery as well. So we began digging out quite a bit of that to make some room for some more fermenting barrels. Sometime later, just before it was time for Saburo to depart, he actually offered to join us here and help us make some liquor to sell to everyone, so naturally we accepted. Now I do want to take a second and mention that we're using the Vanilla Brewing Expanded mod here, so there are other things other than just beer in this. It's not a vanilla playthrough, as you could probably tell. Tell. There are different liquors and wines and things like that. We don't really get to many of those in this episode at all, <laughs> but that will come in the future. I'm just trying to start off slow. Now some time later, Saburo actually wooed Bacchus into becoming his lover. So Tree's mother Bacchus is now the lover of this stranger that we met a few weeks ago who is now making moonshine and whatnot with us. Oh god, I love this game. You never know what could happen. Tree's elderly mother finding love in a moon shining camp with a stranger she just met. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. We ended up doing a little bit more business with some outlaws who came to visit. They were nice enough and must have appreciated our alcohol enough that they actually left us some glitter world medicine that we could use, which would be perfect if someone was maybe about to die. Sometime later, we had the leader of a local settlement ask us to watch his pet cassowary, and in return, he would actually end up sending us a helping hand here to help us with our brewing. So naturally, of course, we accepted and began taking care of his animal for him. Or her. The leader could also be a woman, you misogynistic pigs. 
Then we had our very first encounter with the local Thromboian tribe that was around here. They actually demanded 175 silver, and in return, they would offer us quote-unquote protection. So, naturally, we refused this because that's bullshit, and then they said that they quote-unquote can't guarantee our protection. Then, I suppose, as a show of force, they sent one singular tribes member with a short bow to try and intimidate us, which was perfect. We were very happy about this, as we could use a little bit of target practice. The tribes person had a little skip in their step and was trotting on towards us, going to try and murder us, of course, or so they thought. The three of us met them there at the side of the hill and began firing upon them. Luckily, we didn't have to waste too many bullets, as they weren't very intelligent. They decided to walk right into our wooden spike trap and become dead. Now by this time we had quite the stockpile of beer, we had 143 beers to trade, so naturally we began a small caravan and started stuffing the beers in every crevice that we could find and hauled them to a settlement. And as mentioned, due to the prohibition on this planet that's being enforced by the Rimworld Marshal Service, all of these settlements and outlaw gangs and whatnot are fairly dry unless it's some type of hidden steals or something, but nothing as big as the operation we plan on doing. So of course, they are all extremely happy to shell out some silver for some alcohol. The settlement that we went to trade with was definitely willing to pay, but they also had a husky dog that we were very interested in, so thus we bought it as well. Some time later, we finally returned home from our trading with that settlement, and you could hear the jingle in our pockets from miles away. We returned home with 790 silver. And we also returned home with a good boy. Oh, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. <clears throat> I mean, we returned home with our husky dog. We also appropriately named him White Lightning, and if you don't know what that reference means, it is a type of moonshine, or at least I think. I don't know if I've ever had any. We were lacking in recreation, so we built a table with a knife so everyone could poke around their fingers for fun. I, I don't know how that's enjoyable playing alone, but the dog is there at least. And then late one night, I ended up catching Bacchus and Saburo making some love in a tent. It's a little weird for them to be doing that right next to her daughter's tent, but also it's a little strange for me to sit here and watch, so I guess it's just weird all around. But that doesn't mean I'm going to stop watching. I mean, look, okay, some people are happy doing it in a tent next to their adult daughters. Some people are happy in a god mode just staring down at them and watching. Everybody just needs to mind their own damn business, okay? So before we end the episode here today, though, I do want to mention a few things. So a lot of people asked me in the last series, the Logging Empire series, you know, about the mods and whatnot. So in the links, uh, or in the descriptions, I'm sorry, of each of these videos, there's going to be a link to a mod list. It's uh, like a Steam uh, collection or whatever, and it's going to have the mods there where you can actually access them, and they're all going to be there. And, um, you know, you could, like, uh, subscribe to them all or whatever and, uh, you know, play along or whatever you want to do, that kind of thing. So that's going to be in the description uh, on every video if you're interested in seeing those. And just as well, to set up our universe a little bit here as well, so the RimWorld Marshal Service is essentially an enforcing agency of the RimWorld government, so the government of this planet, um, and they, you know, of course have a prohibition going on, so essentially we're all bootleggers. Now, this does take place in the same universe as our Logging Empire series, thus why we have Bacchus and Tree, who, you know, Bacchus was the slave of our Logging Empire series who escaped with her baby Tree, and they're here, you know, bootlegging, of course, right? So, it is a shared universe. Um, we're going to keep it as that, but if you are if you haven't watched the Logging Empire series, if you're not going to watch it, if you don't give a shit and you just want to watch an alcohol empire, I'm going to try to keep this as interesting as possible where you don't have to watch any other series that may be intertwined with this one because we may have some upcoming as well that may take place with this one as well, if that makes sense. So, you know, I'm going to try to stick with that ideal set so that you guys can, you know, if you don't want to watch any other ones, you don't have to, to understand this series, essentially. And, you know, just like I mentioned earlier, so we're using the Vanilla Brewing Expanded Mod. So, in this episode, we've really just stuck with beer. It's really easy to make, but there's some other things that are really easy to make as well, like cider. You just need apples and things like that. Um, you know, there's plenty of different alcohols in this that we can do. Um, there's uh, tequila. Um, I think there's moonshine and stuff. I'll have to look back over the mods and see. But uh, even in the footage here, you've probably seen a little bit of me, um, you know, just looking over some of this stuff. So we have like a gin steel and, you know, it's different things like that. So 
As we progress, I'm going to move into stronger alcohols that are worth more. Um, they take a lot longer to do most of the time. So like, I think the cider takes five days to ferment. And then there's like, um, I forget which alcohol it is, but there's one that takes um, over 30 days or right around 30 days, something like that. And of course that is worth more money. So we're going to begin touching on more of that as we build the empire and you know, things like that as more, um, I guess demand for the alcohol sets in, or as our characters get better at doing that sort of thing. And to also mention kind of the direction that we're wanting to go with this series, you know, with our Logging Empire series, if you did see that, or if you haven't, to explain, basically we began by cutting down logs, kind of like this. We're starting with the, you know, lower tier stuff, and we're going to move up to like a lot of different stuff. So we began selling art and stuff like that, and we amassed a massive stockpile of silver. And, you know, with that silver, um, we kind of had a climax. I don't want to ruin it if you haven't watched it yet, but we kind of had a climax to do with greed and things like that. So with this series, our characters are going to be slightly different. We're not wanting to stockpile silver and things like that and make it greedy. We want them just like um, offering to allow uh, Saburo to stay with us here for a certain amount of time, even though he's working for us and whatnot. We want to be more of caring and kind of like uh, the RimWorld Marshal Service is this oppressive force of the government, and we just want to make it a you know some money, even if it's not honest money. We're just trying to survive, and everyone's in it together, like all the settlers and stuff in it together. That that kind of thing, if that makes sense. We don't want to be greedy, and we don't want to stockpile money and stuff. We you know obviously could stockpile some, but we don't want to just amass like this massive wealth. We want to have wealth. But just as well, we want to be taking care of the people of the planet. It's kind of like a community kind of thing, or at least that's my idea with this, and that's kind of the direction we want to go with this series, I feel. I realize you guys probably don't want to sit here and listen to me monologue about a direction of the series and blah, blah, blah. You're probably like, I don't give a shit. Let's just see some moonshining and alcohol. Let's see how this series is going, you know, whatever's going on in the series. So I apologize. I'm going to try not to monologue like this crazy at the end of each episode. I just want to do this on episode one, though, to kind of let you guys know kind of what we plan on doing, the direction we want to go with it, where you can find the mods and sources for things, you know, like that and stuff like that. So I just wanted to do that in this episode. I'll try my hardest not to do that at the end of every single episode, even though I do kind of like to do that every so often to kind of just discuss and thank you guys like you know for everything and stuff like that which brings me to you know thanking you guys <laughs> thank you guys ever so much for your support on uh, the channel with me you know the videos i really appreciate it the logging empire video or the series i should say even the first video done amazingly well for our channel and i really could not be more grateful i really appreciate you guys you guys are awesome. So just thank you guys so much. And thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.